Today I'd like to discuss one of the most powerful home automation controllers on the market. If you're interested in finding out how you can get more from your Insteon and Z-Wave devices, then stay tuned for the rest of this video. And as always, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification icon so you'll be notified of any future content. Today I want to give you an overview of the Universal Devices ISY994i Home Automation Controller. This is in no way a new device. It's been around for many years, but they keep improving on it and providing new firmware and new support for the device. Um, as you'll see when we get into the configuration, this device is extremely powerful and it's really only limited by your own imagination and creativity. To be honest, this is definitely an enthusiast level product. So you might, it may take you a bit of time to uh, get it configured and working the way you want. But when you're done, you'll be rewarded with an extremely powerful and flexible device uh, that doesn't lock you down like many of the other hubs. Um, this is certainly not an Insteon hub, which is easy to set, set up, but it's aggravatingly limited um, on what you can do with it. This just opens up a whole new opportunity for you to integrate more devices. And recently, they've added in some of their newest firmware, They've added the ability to um, basically integrate with things like the Ring Doorbell, Sonos, um, as I mentioned, Z-Wave devices, um, uh, uh, Echo, and just a whole pile of other services. So you can actually integrate those into your programming, and we'll get a little bit into that uh, during this overview. All right, so let's quickly go through the hardware uh, before we get into the actual configuration. Um, the unit's actually made up of two parts. We have the actual controller here, and then we have what's called a PLM module, which is actually what communicates it's, uh, into your Insteon devices. So depending on the configuration of the device that you have here, um, you may or may not have the module, again, if you're using Insteon. Let's get into the, a little bit of what's in the front. So you got your traditional lights. Uh, we have an SD card. We have a reset switch, and then depending on the model, you may or may not have an IR sensor there. Uh, and my mine does not have one, so uh, it's just basically a hole there. If we flip the unit to the back, we see a network card, a monitor port, which is actually um, a USB port that allows you to configure the unit allows you to configure the unit with a USB if you don't have access to the network at the moment. Your power input and then port A. And port A is the one that goes to your PLM controller, which is going to hook up to the wall. So that's pretty much it. Uh, there's not a whole lot to this thing. Um, we'll, get, we'll go ahead and set this thing up and get into the configuration. It's a tremendously powerful device. So depending on your needs, this can really cover a lot of spectrum and again one of these problems that we have with some of this stuff today is that you have all these different hubs and you have um, it's not nicely integrated into one package because you have access to IR because you have access to Z-Wave because you have access to Ring, Insteon, Sonos um, you have you know basically you can control everything from one you know one central point just makes it tremendously powerful so let's get into it and see what's available. So the ISY994 has always kind of been a cut above the rest. Um, and the current release of the firmware adds a lot of things that make it more even more useful, like the integration of the Ring Doorbell, Sonos, Echo, a bunch of other stuff. Um, in addition, they've added support for some of the new Insteon devices, such as the new motion sensors. So let's take a look at the um, basic layout and features. When you first log into the admin screen, the layout may look a little bit intimidating, but once you get into it, you'll find out it's sort of logically laid out, and many of the basic features are pretty easy accessed. So I'm going to walk you through kind of everything that's, that's shown here, give you an overview of the software. We'll do a sample program and then move on from there. So the main screen, basically starting from the left here, kind of shows you a listing of all your devices. Now, in my particular case, I've moved devices under groups. So I've broken things up like bathrooms, bedrooms, dining room, etc. cetera. Um, when you first install the devices on here, um, such as your light switches and your thermostats and your 
water valves and leak sensors and whatever else you put in here, um, they'll all appear sort of on the list, on the running list, and it'll be up to you to, to group them how you want, whatever makes sense. Um, on the right, you get kind of the same list of devices, but you get a lot more information. So you get their current state, um, the, their network address, and then a description of what that device says. So it kind of gives you an overview. And as you can see, I've got um, a lot of devices listed here. Um, so and we'll get into some of them that are more important than others, and we'll talk about how I'm using them. If we click on a specific device, and I'll pick um, the thermostat here, for example, you can see that on the right, it shows us a lot more detail about that device. So um, it tells me the temperature, the set points. It tells me what mode it's in. Um, the fan mode and the current state that it's in. And then down here at the bottom, I have some options I can change. So I can actually put an update through and send it and go from there. Um, for the most part, this is, you know, intended to be used from the app or by itself, but this can also be called out in programs, which we'll get into in a little bit. If we look at another device, let's take a look at the dining room chandelier. Um, again, we have um, a variety of things to see. Um, we have some current statuses off. Um, when it does go on, is a 50% level. So in other words, when it's triggered on or manually turned on, it will only light to 50%. And then also drawing your attention to the right over here, this also, also shows me a hierarchy of how things are connected. So in other words, the dining room chandelier is actually being controlled by a remote switch. If I go ahead and activate this manually, so if I hit the on button, you'll see the status go to 50% because I've actually turned the light on. And if I click it off, it'll go back off. So again, it it's allows me a, an infinite amount of control to make these things do what I want. And again, we'll all of this stuff can be controlled in a scene or a program. The next tab we want to get into is programs, actually. So let's take a look at programs. And by default, it comes up with the details screen, which is usually the only place I go to because the summary is kind of more or less the same. But the details is really what I want to see. Um, it tells me which ones are active right now and which ones are, are not active. Um, by the color of the icon. So you can see the red ones presently are not are not active. The ones with a uh, little cross hatch mark there are the ones that are temporarily disabled. So the standard red ones are in the off state right now, and the green ones are actually being run. So let's talk about how these are created and what they're good for. We're not going to get into the other two tabs. Um, the variables is for the next level of programming. So if you're a programmer and you're comfortable with variables, um, you can use variables in this and have it do all kinds of uh, advanced stuff. But if you're just looking for simple programs to, to do basic functions, uh, we're going to walk through that. So we're going to walk through exactly um, how to create a new program. So the first thing we're going to do, and I'm going to keep it a really simple one. So the first thing we're going to do here is click on New Program. And I'm just going to call it a test. There we go. And under Test, we see a blank content. So we've got basically three sections, an if, and a then, and an else. The if is basically setting the conditions. So, so I'm going to go down here under the if, and I'm going to say I want to schedule. And what I want is time. I want it to do something between a certain time, so from to a certain time. And what I want is from sunset to sunrise on the same day. So what I've done here is I've created a condition. If it's between sunset and sunrise, then we're going to have it do something. But first, let's update the if. And now we're in the actions. So if it's between that range, what do we want it to do? Well, I want one of my devices. I want an action, and I want my devices. I'm going to pick the just the dining room chandelier just for experiment. I want it to go on. So I'm going to go ahead and say add to then. So what I've done here is if, if it's anywhere between sunrise and sunset, 
turn on the dining room chandelier. Not super practical and not the kind of program you probably want to create, but it might be for areas like a, an outdoor light or something like that that you want to go on through the night. But for this example, this is what we're doing. Um, however, this can't stop here because if I do that, it will not turn itself off. This is only a condition of turning on. So what we really need to do is to say, okay, if it's not within those times, then don't turn on. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go over here to else, and I'm going to switch this condition to off. And I'm going to add this to else. So basically what we've got here is it says, from sunset to sunrise, turn the dining room chandelier on, otherwise leave it off. That's basically all this does. And again, a dining room chandelier is a really poor example, but it would be ideal for external lights, pool lights, whatever it is that you want to do. So I hope that gives you kind of an idea of, of what it's for. Now I'd like to walk you through a couple that I've done that I find extremely useful. And the most important one that has saved my bacon multiple times is the one I called um, shut off the water main. Um, on a couple occasions, I've had floods here, um, and the first one cost me caused a lot of damage, cost me quite a bit of money to fix. So what I decided to do at that point is to basically add uh, leak sensors everywhere in the house where there's water. Um, so the bathrooms, the sinks, um, the refrigerator because it has a you know a water dispenser, the uh, water heater. You know, basically anywhere that I have a water source, I've added a leak sensor. But I've also added a a, um, a main an auto main shut off. So I've added a water valve on my main line that actually shuts off when it gets a signal. So this program, all it really does is it says if I get an on condition from any of the sensors. So basically, if a sensor's tripped, there's water there and it gets an on condition, um, it's going to actually activate this main relay. It's going to turn it on, which means it's going to turn the valve off. It's active, activating the valve. And it's going to send a notification to everyone in the house that there is a water shutdown. It's not going to turn it back on. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to stay in that position. So this one is a lifesaver to me. It's already saved my bacon a couple times where I've had a small leak and it's actually um, it's actually shut off the water and it saved me from having water all over the place. So I find this one really critical and having that um, water valve shut off and having all the leak sensors was, you know, the best investment I ever made. So that's just one example that I even have one if I, if I leave the garage door open, it'll send me a notification. So these are just some examples of some programs. Again, you're limited only by yourself, your imagination, and the hardware that you have in terms of how many sensors and switches and whatever. So the next thing I'd like to do is to quickly look at the configuration screen. Um, and that's pretty straightforward. I mean, this is where you set up your local zone, your time server, how often you want to synchronize the time. Um, your IP address. And again, I would recommend using a static IP here because um, running DHCP might cause you some grief. Um, the reason it might cause you some grief is you typically access the, this uh, admin interface by the IP address. So having it change would be, there could be a problem. Um, obviously, they give you a support for UPnP, and I hope no one is using UPnP for security reasons, but in the event that you are, you do have a support for that particular function. Again, I highly recommend not using UPnP. Just put a static IP address in and you're done. And this will be beneficial for a bunch of other reasons later on. Um, the other thing I want to cover is under the next tab is emails and notifications. And the top section of this is where I set up my SMTP settings. So my uh, email server, what am I going to use? What's the password? What's the user ID and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the bottom is actually groups. So any one of these programs, like we talked about with the water shutdown, where it sends something to everyone in the house, is um, configurable. So I can create as many individuals as I want, and I can also create as many groups as I want. So certain things that are done, you know, whether it's uh, 
uh, you know, malfunction, whether the batteries are low or whatever, I might want to get just the, I might be the only one that wants to get the notification. Things like that are more global, like sh shutting down the water. I might want everybody in the house to get, and so on. Um, doors open, I might want something else to be taking place. So again, this gives me total flexibility and, and control over who gets what notification for what event. And the last thing I want to cover on this screen is the customizations. Now the customizations are look more complicated than they are. And basically all they are is if I'm going to notify somebody, for example, going using the water shutdown one that we've been talking about, is um, if I use that one as an example, if I create a notification called, you know, water shutdown emergency, I now can put my own subject in and put whatever whatever I want in the body of the in the body of the message. And that can be because it's an email or a text message, it doesn't matter. But this is um, where I can customize what it says. Because you don't want just an alert. You don't want all the alerts to be the same and say, hey, there's an alert. That doesn't really help you. What you want is a specific customized alert for each event. And this allows me to do that. And that's about all here that we need to cover. The only other tab I want to cover on this, and it's a little bit trickier to explain, is the portals. Now, Universal Devices has a portal, and the portal is basically a cloud service where it allows you to connect your, your ISY in your house to their cloud so that in turn it can be used in either the app, the mobile app, or in some of the other functions such as integration with Ring, integration with uh, Sonos. Those are, those are things that need to be connected. So um, in order to get that securely, um, you have to use the portal. The portal does have a charge, but it's pretty minor. I don't remember what it is offhand. Um, but it does provide you um, with that secure connectivity between your device. Otherwise, you're limited to whatever you do locally then you can't get those integrations. You know, obviously, in within your house, you can do all of those things. Um, and most of this stuff will work. But if I try to integrate into the Echo, for example, I need to be able to connect to it so that the, you know, it can communicate up to, you know, the Amazon cloud and get that information so I can use voice activation and all that kind of stuff. And we'll save the uh, cloud portal for another video because um, otherwise the thing would be too long. There's so much power and so much flexibility in this device. There's just a lot to cover. Um, so we'll save the portal and the mobile apps for a different application if you guys want to see them. So that basically is an overview um, of the ISY 994. It has been and continues to be, in my opinion, the best controller out there. Um, it's not the easiest controller, but it's the most powerful, most flexible. And that's obviously just my opinion. It's not, I, you know, it's a lot of this stuff is subjective, but I use things like the, the smart things hub and I've used the Insteon hub and a few others and they're, they're awful. Um, a lot of times some of us have devices that cross multi-platforms and the ring to Insteon is just one of those examples. But you might have a whole bunch of stuff that crosses paths and, you know, to have a, a system like this that integrates most of that and allows you to take advantage of these different services into one device is just awesome. So anyway, um, again, this is about all we want to cover today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and click that notifications icon so you'll be notified of any future videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.